Treblinka was located in eastern Poland and was one of three camps that were under the title of Operation Reinhard. It ran from June 1941 to the 23rd of July 1944. It enclosed a secret that was only known after the duration of the war. Transports of mainly Jewish men, women and children arrived daily. They were separated and sorted into three groups those who would live and work as forced labour for the Germans, those who would dispose of the human cargo after the murderers had left, known as the Sonderkommando, and the third was the young, the old, and the majority of the women who would be forced into an airtight gas chamber and killed using carbon monoxide gas from a German truck, unlike in the notorious camp of Auschwitz where they used crystallised Zyklon B. Dr. Ernfred Erbel had served in Bernberg, which was part of the euthanasia program which was aimed at killing the mentally and physically disabled. He had also worked at Sobibor Death Camp. Erbel had accepted a large number of transports which caused a strain on the running of the crematoria. Due to this, Erbel, who was Treblinka's original commander, was replaced with SS Arbuschopfuhrer Franz Stagel, who had been the former commander of Sobibor Death Camp. On the 1st of September 1942, Stavel arrived at Treblinka to restore order to the killing process. He was a calm and soft-spoken man who, although not a sadist, took pride in his work and made plans to improve Treblinka's ability of deception. Paths were made and flowers planted to create a welcoming appearance to the coming transports. Stargar wore a white uniform and carried a whip instead of the usual SS uniform embroidered with death's head. This gave him the name the White Death. Stargar became accustomed to the killings and saw his victims as cargo other than humans. To tell you the truth, one did become accustomed to it. They were cargo. I think it started the day I first saw the Totenlager extermination area in Treblinka. I remember worth standing there next to the pits full of black blue corpses. It had nothing to do with humanity. It could not have. It was a mass, a mass of rotting flesh. Worth said, what shall we do with this garbage? I think unconsciously. That started me thinking of them as cargo. I rarely saw them as individuals. Between 35 to 40 Germans, all of whom were members of the murderous squad of Hitler fanatics, the Waffen SS, ran the daily operations of the camp, including the killing of the 850,000 who died at Treblinka in the 19 months that Operation Reinhard ran. Treblinka had the highest death toll after Auschwitz of the six extermination camp. The Germans employed 90 to 120 Ukrainian guards who carried out the Germans' orders. Most were prisoners of war who were captured by the Germans. Many worked with the gas chambers and were notorious in killing many men, women and children. Kurt Franz supervised work details, the unloading of transports and the transfer of Jews from the unloading ramp down the tube, otherwise known as the Himmelstrasse, which translates as the road to heaven, to the gas chambers. The prisoners named Franz Lauke, which translates as doll in Yiddish because of his baby face. Although given this name, he treated the prisoners badly and became the most feared man in Treblinka. He would regularly order his dog Barry to attack prisoners by yelling this command, Man, grab that dog, referring to Barry as the man and the prisoner as the dog. Resistance in the camps was frowned upon and harsh punishments were put in place to prevent attempts at resistance. On the 10th of September 1942, a prisoner named Mayor Berliner, who had arrived at Treblinka from Warsaw a few days before, killed SS Antoschafura Max Belais. Transports arrived every day, sometimes more than once. A few hundred strong men and women were chosen to sort the corpses and belongings from the coming transports. Each day, most of these chosen were killed and replaced. Belias lined the prisoners up. At that moment, Berliner launched forward and stabbed Belias with a knife. The crowd of prisoners cheered and the Ukrainian guards opened fire. Berlina was killed on the spot. The Jews learnt an important lesson, that the cost was high for a heroic act 
because 160 Jews were executed for the death of one SS. Another heroic act recorded in Jacob Wynick's book, A Year in Treblinka, is that of a young girl who was being herded to the gas chambers, who grabbed a rifle from a Ukrainian guard and killed him and injured two others. The girl was caught, tortured and murdered, although it was a small victory. Thousands passed through Treblinka, but only a few managed to escape. Some went to the Warsaw Ghetto to testify about what was happening in Treblinka. Others were caught while escaping or by German guards in the towns they had escaped to. In November 1942, two men escaped on the freight train that was taking the belongings of those who had been murdered back to the Reich. In December 1942, seven men tried escaping the same way, although they were caught and executed. Kurt Franz told the remaining prisoners that for every Jew that escapes, ten would be shot. Not long after, four men under the cover of night cut the barbed wire fences and escaped. Twenty sick men were shot on the spot. On the 31st of December 1942, after months of preparing and digging a tunnel, five men escaped into the woods. The Ukrainian guards in the watchtowers noticed and opened fire. The barrack was searched and five were missing. The escapees had reached a local village and were caught trying to hire a car. One escaped, one was shot on the spot and the other three were taken back to the camp and tortured and murdered. After October 14, 1943, when in one of the other extermination camps, Sobibor, there was a mass escape where 300 of the 600 prisoners escaped into the woods. As a result, Belzec, Sobibor and Treblinka were dismantled and burnt to the ground by the Nazis. Trees were planted in their place to cover up the atrocities committed at the camp. The only evidence now are the few rare photographs and the few survivors who swore to tell the world about what happened in Treblinka extermination camp.